Bananas are the green gold of Angola. The country is the second biggest oil producer in Africa, but revenues have gone down by at least a third over the past two years alone due to falling prices. So the country has embarked on a process of economic diversification, and at the forefront is agriculture. In the 1970s, Angola was the leading exporter of coffee, sea sal, sugar cane and bananas. But all that was seriously damaged by its 27-year civil war that ended in 2002. Now, in order to diversify its economy and achieve food security for its people, this large country, twice the size of France, is taking advantage of more than 58 million hectares of land for cultivation. In 2011, Angola was a net importer of bananas. Three years later, it was producing 250,000 tons of bananas, ensuring self-sufficiency. We believe now that the banana is our green gold, not only in terms of commercial value, but also in its nutritional value and the high return that it provides to families. The banana, in fact, is contributing significantly in the diversification of the economy, and I can cite a great example right here. Today, the volume of annual banana sales, only in this area, the irrigated perimeter of Kashito, is almost $100 million. And today, the project is already exporting bananas to sub-Saharan Africa. The best example is the Democratic Republic of Congo, where we exported 10 tons of bananas in October alone. The government provides training and funding for irrigation products, but the challenges are immense. Of Angola's 24 million people, there are over 2 million small farmers. They provide 80% of basic food crop production, and much of the work is done by hand. I work here in the fields where the food is produced, and I go to the market to sell it. The government helps with transportation and distribution. The products are often found on the shelves of supermarkets like this one in Luanda, where local production is promoted and affordable prices are on offer for the emerging middle class, even if half of Angolans still live on less than $2 a day. 35% of our sales today result from what is produced right here in Angola. There are already some domestic producers that are not only producing for the domestic market, but also for the international market. For example, we already export to the regional African market and there are indicators that Angola can become an exporter not only for the African markets, but also for the entire world. The objective is to bring domestic standards up to the level of international health standards, as many African businesses are more used to an informal market. Refriango is a company committed to world-class standards. They produce bottled water and soft drinks and employ 3,800 people. We were one of the first food producing companies to receive certification for our high quality standards. We were awarded the ISO 22000 certificate. Our laboratories have worked very hard and from there the certification of these facilities helped with the international certification. In August this year, 11 million eggs were imported but were destroyed because they didn't meet health standards. New quotas on imports, including eggs, were introduced in February, aimed not just at ensuring quality but also encouraging local production. Before we consider ourselves producers, it's our responsibility to be consumers. And it's our concern here that we're dealing with public health. As both consumers and producers, in some way we have to have the responsibility of informing our customers that what is made in Angola is of high quality, has validity and is credible. It is credible. Yet, although Angola has made remarkable strides in the development of infrastructure over the past decade, it still has ongoing challenges over supply, logistics and transport that ultimately hinder the development of local industry. Angola's economic potential is wide. The question now is will Angola be able to sustainably transform its petroleum-based economy into a diversified and competitive entrepreneurial economy?